When the minds of the ruling party meet, it is never a quiet affair. Last week, President Jacob Zuma gathered the leaders as well as the rank and file of the ANC in Durban to discuss how well the ruling party has done since its elective conference in 2007 in Polokwane. They called it the National General Council. This General Council must basically give a sense of direction with regard to a, a, a detailed program of action towards the ANC sentiment. I expect a review of where we are, what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong, why are we doing it wrong, what, how can we correct it, how adequate are our policies, how inadequate, but the touchstone, are we meeting the needs of the people of our country for whom we have fought and for whom we remain in power. Out of this conference we are hoping uh, when we are getting out to have more united ANC. We meet five years since the Watershed National General Council held in 2005 in Pretoria in Tswane. Leaders and members alike had great expectations of this event. In his opening speech, Zuma made it clear that the restoration of discipline in the party is his main aim at this gathering. He spent some time with business people responsible for the ANC's bulging bank account to say thank you, but also to assure them that their money is well spent. Local and international civil society organizations, as well as foreign governments, were holding their breath for the outcome of discussions on the much maligned media tribunal. Look at the ANC's track record, and I defy you to find a political party in our parliament today that has a record that can stack up to ours in defense and in pursuance of freedom of expression and freedom of the media. Virtually every word that's printed in this country emanates from four huge print media conglomerates. And we don't think that that is a reasonable state of affairs. Or what the commission has recommended is that it should be parliament that investigates first the desirability and the feasibility of such a media appeals tribunal. That investigation could go either way. Right? Now we are saying, as far as the ANC is concerned, should Parliament decide that there should be one, it should have these particular features, free of commercial and party political interference, and it should be independent. Parliament's timetable is decided by Parliament. Uh, we couldn't say do it next week or next year. Parliament has a program every year which it has to work through and they will decide. So uh, something will be placed before Parliament at some point on the initiative of the ANC obviously and it will be put on Parliament's timetable. We, not, we can't decide when Parliament will discuss anything. Did the delegates have any suggestions on penalties? Uh, there were no suggestions as to from the delegates or anyone else or any of the presenters in the commission as to what sort of sanctions and what form those sanctions might take. There were no such suggestions whatsoever. A compromise on the Youth League proposal on nationalizing South Africa's mines was also reached. There's research being done you have existing policy decisions. Those existing policy decisions have been there. They've not been overturned. They're there in the ready-to-govern document. The same crafting is used in the uh, RDP document. None of these have been overturned. There's no point at which any decision-making body of the ANC has said that these issues are now no longer relevant. And the way in which 
It's crafted in the ready to govern document is that uh, the state should be able to decide about its own involvement in the economy on a case by case basis. And in this regard, it could enlarge through, for instance, nationalization, joint ventures with the private sector, the establishment of new state uh, owned uh, enterprises, or it could reduce. Uh, what we're clear about is if you want a state-owned mining company, then it will need empower, enabling legislation. And, and as the work gets through, a parliament would, of course, be the reference point for the decisions about this. Okay? I'm not panicking that is, man, uh, there's going to be you know, all this kind of wake up every day, every boat occupies the mine and so on. <laughs> I mean, but how did you manage to calm the youth league down? No, nah, that's rational. I mean, they themselves. I mean, it was useful to to, 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 to see to hear uh, Julius in his in his for the first time in his life saying, um, "We're not talking about reckless taking of mines. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be reckless." I mean, there's this kind of understanding that this matter needs to be approached in a more pragmatic way, mm. uh, in the interest of the country. I think we've got consensus with the youth league in that direction. The NGC has directed the ANC leadership to be firm, decisive, and consistent in the application of discipline and in rooting out factionalist and divisive tendencies, including within the NEC itself. The NGC has correctly directed that we curb possible abuse of power and corruption among ANC members at all levels through the establishment of an ANC Integrity Committee. The structure, the ANC Youth League tabled the issue of nationalization and the possible establishment of a state mining company. The NEC will undertake research in this regard as part of the recommendations to the National Policy Conference in 2012. The NEC is a guarantor of our human rights and our democracy. We are a movement of the people. The ANC leaves, the ANC leads. In closing, Zuma reminded everyone that the ANC is on the right track and that, at least for five days, it can keep a lid on the issues that threaten to pull the party apart.